Greetings to all you photography enthusiasts out there, and even if you're not a photo nerd like me, I think this series of videos about historical photographic processes may still interest you. Thank you for joining me. I am Melissa from the Volusia County Public Library, and today I'm going to start this series with what many consider to be the first photographic process, the daguerreotype. Yes, the daguerreotype, also known as the mirror with a memory because of its highly polished reflective surface. It was introduced in France on August 19th, 1839, but before we dive too far into the details of this amazing process, I want to talk a little bit about what led up to the great invention called photography, one that changed the world, I might add. The image shown here is an unidentified man and woman from the Library of Congress Prints and Photographs online collection and was created circa 1855. Many years before the daguerreotype was invented, in fact hundreds of years, all the way back to ancient Greece, astronomers would use a camera obscura to view solar eclipses so they wouldn't damage their eyes. The term camera obscura literally translates to dark chamber in Latin, and that's exactly what it was a dark room that people could actually walk into. There was a small hole on one of the walls, and the wall opposite the hole was painted white. The hole would act as somewhat of a lens, and the outside scene would be projected upside down and inverted onto the white wall. This illustration on the right is the first diagram of a camera obscura drawn by Leonardo da Vinci in one of his journals in 1519. It changed over time and became a small wooden box with a lens and a sheet of ground glass that artists would use to trace real life scenes onto paper. For many years, people were trying to figure out a way to record realistic likenesses of a person or a landscape without having to draw it. That's what we do after all. We look for faster and easier ways of completing things. Joseph Nisiphor Niepce, a French inventor that was not that great at drawing, was the first to figure out the chemistry needed to make photographs in 1816. He called his process heliography, or sun drawings. These were images made with very long exposure times, like eight hours. And even then, the images he created would fade dramatically when exposed to light for long periods of time. The first photographs Niepce made had to be stored in very dark spaces. He still didn't have a way of fixing the image so it would be permanent when viewed in the light. Those of you who have printed your own black and white photos in a dark room might remember that you can't turn on the light to view your printed image until it's been soaked in a chemical known as fixer for a few minutes. If you do, the image will turn black as soon as the light hits it. Niepce made the first fixed photograph in 1827. The view from the window at Le Gras showed the courtyard of his house, and this is considered to be the very first photograph. In 1829, Niepce collaborated with the French artist and physicist Louis Jacques Mandaire de Guerre to perfect his heliography process. But Niepce died in 1833, and his son Isidore continued his partnership with Daguerre, and in 1839, the daguerreotype was introduced to an amazed and excited public. As I said earlier, people would call it a mirror with a memory. This is a daguerreotype of Joseph Jenkins Roberts from the Library of Congress Prints and Photograph Collection online. He is the first and seventh president of Liberia. You can see how detailed the image is. This is what a typical daguerreotype camera looked like, and you can see that it's basically a small camera obscura with a lens. Now for the techie stuff. The basic instructions were the photographer would start with a silver-coated copper plate that was highly polished and treated with an iodine vapor, and this is what made it light sensitive. Then it was put into the camera, in the dark of course, and the photograph was taken. The photographer would then use mercury vapor, which is highly toxic, to develop the image. Then a solution of sodium thiosulfate would fix it by washing out the unexposed silver iodide. This method reduced Niepce's 8-hour exposure time to a mere 20 minutes, which is still a long time, but much, much better. 
The resulting images were very detailed and highly polished and resembled a mirror. They were extremely fragile objects, so they would be put into beautiful and intricate velvet and sometimes satin lined leather cases with glass over the image to protect it. This is a lovely daguerreotype from the Metropolitan Museum of Arts collection. It's been very well preserved and you can see just how beautiful the cases could be. Daguerreotype studios started to pop up all over the world, but it was an expensive process and many couldn't afford it. So in the 1850s, other less expensive processes had been announced, and by 1860, the daguerreotype's popularity had pretty much fizzled out. But when you do see a daguerreotype, my goodness, are they something special. This is the first known photograph of Abraham Lincoln when he was 37 years old and a lawyer and congressman in Springfield, Illinois, photographed by Nicholas Shepard around 1846. This is also in the Library of Congress's uh, photograph collection. This is a modern daguerreotype of my graduating class, and I wanted to add this into the presentation because you can really see the reflection of my hand holding my little point-and-shoot camera. You can see that there's no glass over it, there's no beautiful velvet and leather case, it's just the plate with the photograph, the photographic image on it. And this is me being photographed in a modern daguerreotypist studio in Toronto. The studios used big windows that would let lots of light in, and you can see the metal headrest that would be used to hold the subject still for the 20 minute long exposure. Now at the same time all this was happening in France, William Henry Fox Talbot was perfecting his negative positive process called the calotype in England. This process made it possible to make multiple prints from a single negative and I'll teach you more about that next time. If you're interested in the history of photography and you'd like to learn more, I have a couple of recommendations that are available for checkout here at the Volusia County Public Library. This is Photography, The Definitive Visual History by Tom Eng. And this is The History of Photography in 50 Cameras by Michael Pritchard. I'd like to thank you for joining me today and encourage you to like us on Facebook and Instagram and check out the other videos on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.